This is a first look at Vital Synth. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel Nate here and today we are going to be checking out the much anticipated Vital Synth. Now what makes Vital quite special is it's absolutely free. Uh, it's going to be available on the 24th of November. I've got a pre-release copy that we're just going to take a look at now. Uh, it has a lot in common with uh, stuff like Serum. It takes a little bit of inspiration from pigments I believe as well. And I can even compare this to something like, you guys know I love Falcon, which is a $300 synth. Um, this obviously doesn't have the extens uh, extensive sampling capabilities of uh, Falcon, but some of the modulation stuff in this comes pretty close, and it's one of my favorite features in Falcon is the, uh, the amount of detail in the modulation. So this is not going to be a full walkthrough. I want to take a brief look at some of my favorite features inside of uh, Vital. Uh, we'll take a listen to a few of these sounds. Um, I think I'm going to do a few videos uh, after this covering specifics. I'd like to actually do a video uh, on how to work with wavetables inside of uh, Vital because there's some really interesting stuff happening there. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for tutorials that you'd like to see on Vital uh, in the comments, uh, hit us up in the comments and um, I will uh, check it out and see what we can do. Right, uh, so yeah, before we get stuck in, guys, if you are enjoying the content, please uh, do consider hitting the like button. Uh, also, come and subscribe to us and hit the notifications bell so that you are up to date with when we have new content on the channel. With that said, let's dive in and we'll check out some of the features in VitalSynth. Right, so here we go. This is VitalSynth. I'm just going to initialize the preset. Um... And let's take a look at the basics. Uh, if you own Serum, you're going to feel right at home with this. It's almost identical, the layout of the synth. Um, you've got three wavetable oscillators here, a noise oscillator. Uh, this one has two filters, which is a major upgrade for me from Serum. In actual fact, you can actually have five filters in the signal path, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. But the big plus here is that you have two multi-mode filters that can be run in parallel or in serial which is huge for me that's one thing that i wished uh, serum had from the beginning uh, it gives you a lot of options as far as shaping your sound goes oscillators as well uh, very similar to serum you've got unison on each of the, the uh, oscillators uh, this is wave tables that you can select here um, so there is the free version i'll just uh, point this out now uh, then there's also a paid version a 20 dollar 20 25 dollar version i'm not sure um, which adds some wave tables and some presets and then a more expensive version as well uh, which adds even more wavetables and more pre presets and then also a five dollar subscription plan uh five dollars a month which is uh, you know it's a price of a cup of coffee um which adds everything as well and you can pay that off every month um so i, I would actually really recommend that you go and support this I, I mean in all honesty this is the caliber of this plugin before we get into it um it's not a free synth uh by the feature set that you have here um they will let you download it for free but i would highly recommend you actually support the developers and go and grab a at least the 20 dollar package uh, and it just gives you some tools to start off with um, as far as the wavetables are concerned. So there's a couple of interesting things on the oscillators as well. You've got this uh, spectral uh, uh, modifier here, which does some pretty interesting stuff to your waveforms. Let's actually grab a wavetable. It's a little bit more apparent. We'll take this for example. So you've got the spectral modifier here, which has a number of different things that you can do to it. Phase dispersal, time skew. So already you're kind of getting quite detailed sounds just out of the spectral uh, editor here. Then you've also got the distortion editor, or uh, yeah, it kind of distorts the waves, uh, the waves, not in the distortion sense, but you have um, FM between uh, oscillator 2 and 3, also between the noise source or the... Uh, Sample source, ring modulation, uh, you can do pulse width stuff with this, which is really nice. And all the usual stuff, performance, uh, sync mode. Um, so quite a lot that you can do there already. Uh, 
The real star of the show for me, though, is the modulation. So I'm going to kind of skip over some of the basics. Let's take a look at one little cool feature with the um, uh, oscillators and modulating those. So you've got four LFOs. So you can add more. Uh, you've got three uh, envelopes on hand here, just like Serum as well. I believe you can add more as you start. Um, yeah, you'll see as soon as you add a modulation destination, it'll just keep expanding. I'm not 100% sure how far that will go, but it's quite a bit. Um, the LFOs can also be run as envelopes as well. You've got curved automation or curved uh, uh, Bezo curves for the uh, LFO shapes. Number of presets here. Uh, if you hold down the shift, you can, or control, you can uh, add in stepped amounts. So you can set the grid the way that you want, right up to 32. And you can go and draw in pretty complex patterns like that. Uh, you can also, this little brush thing will give you access to different shapes. So if we go step mode, you can draw in your sort of typical steps. Halves will be sort of half steps. So great for creating sort of gated patterns and things like that. Um, there's a lot you can do with this. But let's just quickly uh, reset this to... We'll use this to saw up. So modulation is fairly simple. You just click and drag. I'm going to drag this to the pitch of our uh, saw wave that we have. There, we've got some modulation happening. Uh, now we've got this really little interesting function on the oscillators. If you click here, you've got the transpose snap. So there's two ways you can use this. If you have global snap on uh, holding a C, they will only play a C note. But if you turn global snap off, uh, the quantizing happens relative to whatever note you're holding down. So if I hold down an A now, I can take a listen to what happens. So it's modulating the pitch up, but snapping it to uh, the first notes of the scale that you play. Um, we can put in a few more notes here. Let's put in a sort of minor chord. Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite features in this, and that is the stereo spread for modulation sources. Um, and this is incredibly cool. We'll actually offset the modulation for the left and right channels. So take a listen to what happens to this note, uh, the sort of scale that's playing here now. We'll just maybe just bump that down to one, to one, and play with the stereo spread. Take a listen to this. So you're getting some really, really cool stereo action going there. And this can be applied to anything. You can apply that to uh, filter modulation as well. Uh, let's add in some filter modulation here. We'll just assign this to our cutoff. Oh, I've got that on the drive accidentally. I kind of wish that they'd put in knobs for the filters here, uh, but I guess it will take some getting used to. So take a listen to this one. We'll bang this into stereo now as well. It's really, really interesting modulation that you're getting there. And then also these can be modulated with stereo sources as well. So if we bring that down, let's modulate that with one of the random sources now. Um, we've got a number of different shapes here as well. Sample and hold, uh, silence, blade, low and subtractor, which is a kind of noise source as well. Let's go with the sample and hold. We'll sync this. We'll put this into stereo as well. So we're going to have a stereo modulation source modulating the stereo dial of a, another modulation source. We can do that and bang that one up. We can also right click and set this into bipolar mode, which will go in both directions now. And let's hit the note. Really, really interesting. You almost kind of get into sort of modular territory with this. It's not a modular synth, but the modulation uh, allows you to do some pretty interesting, almost generative style um, patches with the synth. So that is really, really impressive, the the modulation in this. Um, we'll just check out the Matrix page as well. 
so one of the things that I uh, wasn't uh, was kind of missing initially, which I I've found a workaround here, is the side chain uh, for the automation inside of Serum. So you could actually side chain a certain modulation source with another one. So like for instance, a modulation would uh, velocity would uh, work with how much something would be mo modulated if you set that to the side chain. Uh, this one you can modulate anything inside of this. So we can modulate the amount of the random source modulating the stereo of the LFO, which is modulating the pitch of the oscillators. And we can assign a velocity to that. So we'll have sort of less, less happening when you play soft notes, much more happening when you play a harder note. And this can go on and on. You can kind of layer these up with a random as well. We'll just add a random one to that. And, uh, I mean, it's endless. You can basically just keep on going, modulating, 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 just layering it up and creating incredibly complex and uh, very unique sounding patches from that. Uh, cool. Let's check out a few other features. I'm going to uh, take a look at the text-to-speech. So you heard this in the intro as well. Um, let's just initialize our preset one more time. So this is uh, a super cool little feature. If you right-click and hit text-to-wavetable, to let me just mention as well that you do need to be online for this. It needs an internet connection because I believe that it uses an online service to generate these waveforms. Um, but the cool thing with this is you've actually got accents, so uh, we'll go with Japanese and let's type in something completely random here, feel like some sushi. We'll hit enter, let it do its thing, and we've got a generated wavetable. Uh, one nice thing to do here is use the vocode, uh, this will allow you to sort of manipulate the formants in your wavetable. And let's just grab a, uh, we'll just grab a ramp, grab a saw up, and we'll assign this to the wavetable index. And let's just slow this down a little bit and take a listen to what we've got. I feel like some sushi. I feel like some sushi. I, I feel like some sushi. Let's bang on the compressor. I feel like some sushi. That's super cool. <laughs> really, really cool. This is hours of fun, this. Um, let's try another one. We'll just text to wavetable let's go with uh, uh, what are we gonna do uh, let's go with just the English uh, we'll go with the English UK and something random again we'll go steak and ale pie and now we've got a steak and ale pie pad steak and ale pie steak and ale pie Steak and ale pie. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Um, yeah, so very, very cool this. Uh, and obviously you don't need to run through these with the ramp as well. Uh, we could use completely different automation for that uh, or different modulation for that. Let's go with the random source and we'll select a sample and hold. We'll just apply this to the index again. We'll keep that in uni unipolar mode. Um, and let's just bump this up to... Very, very cool. Um, so another thing with the modulation as well, I know I'm kind of focusing mostly on that, but it's uh, really the star of the show here for me is uh, you can get super high rates with the LFOs as well. Um, so if we do a initialized preset, we'll bring in a filter. A little bit of resonance in there. A little bit of drive. And let's assign a triangle to our filter cutoff. Let's take this off and we'll just put this into seconds. And let's bring this right down. This is pretty much into audio rates there. 
you can kind of hear that filter uh, filter uh, frequency modulation happening there just push that up slightly very very cool um, a couple of other little things, uh, there's a wavetable I want to show you guys as well, which is really nice, uh, or a uh, spectral editor for one of the wavetables. Um, so we looked at these briefly, I just want to highlight the shepherd tone here, because uh, this is another thing that I've only been able to, well that Falcon does, uh, and this one does pretty well as well. Um, so how this one works, you can see what it's doing there, but we're going to edit this to create a shepherd tone now which is going to be an endless riser effect to do that we're just going to use a triangle uh, or a um, saw ramp again and let's assign this one to the spectral or the shepherd tone on the spectral editor and take a listen to this <laughs> Very cool. Um, so a nice little trick that you can do with that as well. Uh, let's just dive through some of the effects as well. So I mentioned that you can do five filters in this. So you've got the two parallel or serial filters uh, in the main page here. Um, you've also got the equalizer, uh, which the low and high shelves can be flicked between a resonant band, uh, a resonant low pass and a high pass filter. So we can filter at that stage. Same goes for this one. And then we also have a additional filter, which is the same as the multi multi filters that you have in the voice page as well. Uh, you can assign one of these, a comb filter or whatever. And let's bring up some resonance. So yeah, so two multimode filters, a band pass and high pass sort of utility filter as well. Uh, sorry, a low pass and high pass sort of utility filter through the EQ. And then the fifth one being the extra filter in the effects page. And um, some of these filters as well be get really interesting uh, when you start using the stereo modulation. So we can add in some stereo modulation on our comb filter. And let's put that into stereo, take a listen to what you get now. Very, very cool. Um, let's just check out some, we'll, we'll check out the advanced tab as well. I just want to show you one last thing here. When you are working with wavetables, uh, let's just again initialize this. We'll use one of these wavetables. So you've got, find something maybe just a little bit more complex. There we go. So I'm going to put this into unison mode now. I'll just go with like four voices. Or oh, actually, oh, we can go all the way up to, let's go up to six. I'm going to keep the detuning at a minimum. And let's just pop into the advanced tab. And you'll see that you have a number of options here now for the oscillators. Uh, high res wavetable. You've got the unison modes. So you can do different unison modes. You can drop the center to a sub um, two times octaves, for example. You can even do chords. Let's go to the minor chord. Odd harmonics. Now in unison mode as well, um, you can then enable not just the stereo unison or the detuning, but you can also add in spectral blends, the distortion spread as well, and the table spread. So the table spread you'll hear that is the wavetable index position for each voice. So each voice has a different index now. Um, let's just quickly pop back in here. We'll add a, let's check out. We'll use the enharmonic stretch and let's add in a, add in a bend as well, or a, uh, let's add in a pulse width. Cool. And jump back to the advanced tab. So now you can actually add in 
variances for, for each voice on the spectral spread as well as the um, pulse width uh, mod that we have there as well. So you can check out. what's going on there uh, and then we can actually modulate them on the voice page we can modulate these but we could also modulate the advanced tab as well to get the variances happening differently at different times for each of the voices in unison which is also super super cool you can do some really interesting stuff with that So there you have the modulation happening, but the bass wave in the middle is staying the same, but all of the uni unison voices on top of that are the ones that are now modulating, and you've still got that centered note in the middle, which is remaining static, which is very, very cool. I love that feature as well. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, just, oh, let's just briefly look at the wavetable editor itself. Uh, so let's just start off with a basic saw again. So coming to the wave editor, uh, you've got a wave source here currently. So this allows you to do some editing. You can draw in according to the grid and kind of draw in your own waves. Uh, you've got different blend modes for the wave tables. Um, and then the interesting thing with this is it works kind of like animation software or any sort of video editor where you can add keyframes and then set up each keyframe to be different. So we've got this one that we did there. We can go in here now and draw in something completely different. And we can set and set up the blend types as well. And watch what happens now if we just deselect this and kind of run through our wavetable. See how it's morphing between the two. So it's a quick and easy way to create your, your own wavetables. Uh, you can also do them by modifying the harmonics. Uh, if we jump into this one again, we can play around with the harmonics of the wavetable as well. And then you also have modifiers that you can add, uh, which is super interesting. So on top of our wave editing that we can do here, we can go and add in something like a wave folder, for example. And this can also be animated, so we can dial in some wave folding there. <laughs> and add another keyframe further down the line and have a different wave folding amount. And then you can also add multiple sources, which is super interesting. Uh, I haven't really seen this in many wavetable synths. Um, you can add in an audio file source, which is how I would do most of the stuff. Um, this one allows you to sort of select the sort of window size that you're grabbing from those wavetables, kind of like the wavetable editor in Halion, which is super powerful. Um, and then you can add in animated positions for the audio file. You just dra drag those and uh, let's see if we've got a... There's our audio file. We'll just remove this one for now. You can actually um, layer these together, but we'll just have the wave there for now. We'll just set this to normalize. And um, you can change the window sizes and do all sorts of other stuff and add modifiers to these as well. Um, yeah, so layered wave tables, super interesting. Um, I, like I said, I'll, I'll probably do a full video where we just play around with the wavetable editing because this is it's, it's a really intuitive way of dealing with wavetable creation cool so i'm, I'm kind of just scratching the surface with this we'll do some more content at some point uh create some patches and things uh, for now i'll just play you a few sounds from this um i did make one or two sounds we can just do or search for there we go. Um, just very briefly before making this video, I was just kind of playing around, creating a few sounds. And... These kind of things are really, really cool. Uh, Metallosaur.
Let's just go through a few of the patches. We'll check out some sequence patches here first. That's coming from one note. Um, so obviously just different oscillators automating in and out. Beautiful. Let's go with experiment. Like I said, you can do some pretty cool generative stuff in this as well. This AEIO patch is great. Try out some pads. Something a little bit more run of the mill kind of pad. Lastly, one or two bass sounds. Quite a bit of cool dubstep -y kind of stuff in there as well. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a ton of presets coming up for this very soon as well. Um, I will most certainly do some banks for this, uh, perhaps initially just for our uh, integral Cytron series, which is kind of like scaled down packs, but for a very reasonable price. Um, I will look at doing something like that and I'll let you guys know when we have something available. Um, but yeah, I'm going to kind of cut it there. Um, awesome little synth i'm super impressed with this i didn't actually have high hopes for it in the beginning um because it's free you know there's been overhyped free synths like this before which didn't turn out quite the way that we were hoping for um but this is a pretty incredible offering um i definitely think you should go check this out like i said i, I highly recommend actually supporting them as well just getting the paid version it's 20 dollars, which is nothing for this um yeah so 24th of november i've got a pre-release copy now but you can grab this on 24th of november i will put a link in the comments below for you guys and yeah go grab it and have fun so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did again please make sure that you hit the like button subscribe and notifications bell and i will catch you guys again soon uh, feel free to go check out our website as well www.marillamusic.com and pick up a sound bank or two. Great. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you again soon. Ciao.